Hello and good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, February 26, 2019 meeting of the Lakefield School Committee. I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask uh, all to join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Also, as we do, begin uh, with the reading of the mission statement. The mission of the Lakefield Public Schools is to graduate students who are competent, lifelong learners, who are respectful and caring members of their community. Our mission is to prepare students for college, career, and community by providing rich and challenging our curriculum, high quality instruction, and educational experiences that meet their individual needs and interests. Uh, next on the agenda is a public uh, our comment period. Welcome any member of the public to, who would like to express a thought to the school committee to please feel free to come up and do so. Okay, seeing none, we shall move along. Item number five, Student Advisory Council. Hey guys, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for being here. How's, how's everything going? Good. Be well. Good. What do you have to share with us uh, 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 for tonight? Okay. Um, next week and Wednesday, there's half day. Um, the senior class is preparing for a variety of senior events, um, including the senior show, uh, senior night, and senior prom. And then after prom, the students will have another um, after prom event at Dave and Buster's, like there was last year. Um, and then they'll also be participating in the Credit for Life event, um, which will teach them kind of professional and life skills. Um, the week before vacation was Teen Dating Violence Awareness Week, sponsored by the, um, the Mentors of Violence Prevention Group. Um, a speaker named Malcolm Astley um, spoke to the freshman and sophomore classes and kind of um, educated them about the importance of healthy relationships. Um, and this week is See Something, Say Something Week, um, and there'll be presentations to gym classes to talk about the issue. Yes. And so tomorrow, um, the theater department is going to be uh, performing 26 Bubbles, uh, a play, and the name is a reference to the 26 Steps. Uh, of Sandy Hook, and this morning they started hanging signs around the hallway um, with uh, statistics about school shootings and, and other facts. Um, right now, as you might have been able to tell because of the parking, um, there's a playoff game happening between Reading and, and Wakefield. And uh, on February 23rd, uh, the wrestling team's first, the wrestling team sent uh, the first go from Wakefield to uh, become a, an all-state champ, so that's pretty good. That's wonderful. Great. And her name is Anna Baldovino. She's a freshman. Yeah. Wonderful. Any uh, thoughts or comments for our, our committee members? Do you have a score of the game? No, I wish. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have anyone in there that could set us a score of the game? We'll have to send a text to someone. Who I can. walked by. We were losing four to nothing, but it was very early. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I'll wait those up by one and a half. All right. According to our coaches. Are you at the half? Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, Greg. Oh, I just had a question. Uh, the See Something, Say Something uh, program, is that part of the dating violence prevention program, or is that different? Um, that's part of the... Um, um, I think it, it refers to um, like gun violence events. Um, Say that again. Sorry. I think it refers to like to being aware of like potential um, like possible gun violence. I see. Okay, gun violence. Thank you. Could you elaborate a little bit more on the, the 26 bubbles? Like, how is this uh, played? Huh? 26 pebbles. Pebbles. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, how how is it being acted out? Is it in the theater? Or is it throughout the school? How is it? How is it? I, I think it's at the Savings Bank Theater. To be in the theater, yeah. So it's a, it's a, like, almost like a, a regular kind of play. Yeah, yeah. Production. Okay. Will it also be performed on Saturday at Wayland High School for the theater competition? I'm actually not sure. I think so. Uh, Wayland 4:30 yeah. Saturday for the state competition, which would be great. Yeah. So uh, that's our play for the Mass High School Correct. drama competition. Correct. Got it. Thank you. Correct. And Thursday night yeah. in the Saving Bank Theater here. Oh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> He's not. <laughs> Thank you. 
the okay. students are seeing it tomorrow? Uh, in? No? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I think it's the week, the, the second last week of March. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right, well, thank you so, so uh, very much. You. You, uh, you are welcome and encouraged to stay and participate as, as you like. I think they want the game. You know, I want to make sure that that's, that, that, that's, uh, that's not a bad idea. Thanks. Please do. Okay, moving right along. Consent agenda. We have a motion. Mr. Callahan. Well, the school committee approved the minutes of the February 13, 2019 school committee meeting as presented. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, passes unanimously. <coughs> okay. Uh, ch uh, chairs, uh, comments, and action items. The. Um, uh, well, uh, my intention was to, was to bring bring forward some uh, important uh, updates and dates. Uh, my suggestion right now is that uh, we move forward, and I, I I can send things around that Doug and I have been talking about dates that have been coming together. Just want to make sure that we all have. But I would like to say out loud uh, because it's uh, this week uh, that the Wakefield Education Foundation's their adult spelling bee is Friday night, and uh, I want to make sure that we uh, I promote that and encourage uh, the community to support left as, as best as we all can, um, and any member of the uh, school committee or school committee wanted to form a, um, a table or a team, we should uh, consider doing that. But anyways, this, this coming Friday, Friday, March 1, um, at the Wakefield Elks um, is the uh, left's annual adult spelling bee. Right. Okay. Uh, item number eight, moving on, superintendent's report, uh, remarks and reports. Mr. Lyons. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Um, first, I'd like to welcome back families and students um, as um, from February break. It's, it's, it's good to have the break, but it's also good to get back at it and continue the year and the calendar. Tomorrow marks, um, tomorrow after tomorrow, after today, we'll have 75 days of school left. Not that we're keeping track or counting no. too closely, but time's going very quickly. So um, just a few comments in that area. But... Um, this evening, I'm, I'm going to be presenting the FY20 superintendent's recommended budget, and so I, I appreciate the opportunity to do that. And so um, I, I will talk about kind of the process um, that we took and the time that we took to develop this budget, but I also wanted to share uh, with the committee and, and the community that when we plan our budgets annually, um, we kind of look through the lens of our core values, our, our vision, and, and our instructional strategy. And, and our mission and our vision, um, you may recognize it on the slides, um, it's the same text and same language that Tom uses to open our school committee meeting every week. Um, and this is kind of the beginning of our one-page instructional strategy that all schools have, all teachers have, um, all administrators use, and this is kind of the lens that we use in planning, and all the planning that we, we do in the district. And so um, the first part of our instructional strategy is uh, quality teaching. And so there's three parts to our instructional strategy. Part one is quality teaching, really, first and foremost, investing in our teachers and our educators, our faculty and our staff. And so, you know, we want to make Wakefield kind of a, a vibrant, exciting place to work. We want to be able to hire, keep, and develop, and, and retain our, our, the very best teachers and faculty that we can. So the first part of this quality teaching strategy is to foster continuous educator growth and job-embedded professional development, right? And so job-embedded professional development is... During the school calendar, during the school year, we have time dedicated within the, within the school day, within the calendar, for teachers to stay current in their practices, to learn with and from one another the things that they are interested in learning and things that they need to learn to be most effective in the classroom. Um, and our teachers really do an amazing job in this space in giving of themselves and giving their time. 
And so between, when we say job embedded PD, this includes three professional days, 10 early release days, um, it includes Monday faculty meetings, and it also includes professional learning community time where teachers work with one another. And so the total number of hours, just to create a context that teachers spend um, in job embedded PD, uh, they spend anywhere between 80 and 100 hours in the course of the school year. Now that doesn't include any professional coursework that they do on their own. It doesn't include any uh, summer work that would be on top of that as well. So I, I make note of that because sometimes we're asked questions like, you know, how much time do teachers spend um, in kind of keeping current in their content area? Or how much time, what does it take to stay, to keep your certification current, a highly qualified certified certification? What does it take to kind of keep that intact? And so, um, so teachers really work hard at this and, and we are really trying to develop structures uh, for them to do that and to have it be during the course of their working year. And so the other part of this is that we try to create opportunities for teachers to deprivatize their practice and kind of learn and collaborate with one another, right? And so, you know, the old style of professional development where a professional might come and stand in front of a room and talk at teachers for a couple hours, that's kind of, it's a little dated, um, and there are some instances when that, that may be appropriate, but, you know, we find that teachers really learn very well um, with one another in smaller cohorts than larger groups. Um, and so we've made some changes in our professional development uh, and also in our PLCs and how we're supporting teachers to do that. And I think the teachers have done, have really made good use of their professional learning community time within the structures of the day um, to, to really meet the needs of kids. It's, that's kind of an ongoing challenge, um, so it, it's something that they're really working on. And the third part of the quality teaching um, bullet, or the, the the first part of our strategy, or the third part of this, is to build a capacity with high leverage instructional practices. It allows um, instructional leadership teams and the administrative teams to select, you know, one of a few instructional practices as opposed to try to focus on so many, you know, um, really, and, and allowing, giving schools and administrative teams and teacher leaders that permission to work on things like growth mindset, or to work on things like student engagement, or to work on a topic like meeting diverse needs, or, or the, the needs of diverse learners. Um, it allows them to, to not, you know, say that every, there's a lot that, isn't, that is important, but to really dig deep and focus in the, that area. And so that's kind of the first part of our strategy that, that we focus on in kind of building the budget. Um, the next part of our strategy is to um, invest in high quality teaching tools, invest in, you know, rigorous curriculum. And so um, we have, we're very fortunate to have a curriculum review and renewal cycle that allows us annually to, to look at um, a curricular area. And this started six years ago now, when we started off straight away with English and Math. And we looked at the curriculums that we were using at our, at our at our, our elementary schools, and we said, okay, um, what is the same, what is different, how do we prioritize, what is the most current programs that our students could benefit from, so we brought them in and we piloted those curriculums. We've learned a lot since that first year of implementation. Um, we're now in our fifth year, where we're currently implementing a new FOSS science curriculum, we're implementing a new world language as well as health and wellness curricula right now as well. And so this current year, um, with the renewal and review cycle, we are reviewing our social studies curriculum, which is timely because there's a new state framework coming out for social studies this year. Um, and as part of our curriculum, we always look at um, how to integrate digital tools, enrich and personalize you know, student needs. A lot of the new curriculums that we're purchasing has supports um, to kind of challenge our most advanced learners and supports also to, to challenge and support uh, learners that have different needs. There are, there are digital tools 
to support our English language learners, as well as students that may have reading or special education needs. Um, so we're particularly pleased at kind of the range of our new curriculums and the ability to accommodate students with those materials. Um, also, it's a priority for us to, to get digital textbooks. You know, we want students to be able to, you know, not lug big giant book bags back and forth to school, um, but to be able, <coughs> when possible, to jump online and, and look at uh, a text and read a text and, and, and kind of do that right on their computer just to save, uh, save time. They can do it, you know, they don't have to be home. They can really do it anywhere as long as they have access um, to, to a computer. So that's, that's kind of the second part of our uh, instructional strategy. And the third part of our instructional strategy um, has becoming increasingly complex and kind of critical for us and for our students, right? It's to individualize student learning um, and to invest in our students, right? And so um, our students are working with more and more complex curriculum materials, and they're producing work um, that is really, I don't want to say surprising, but amazing, right? And so, you know, whenever we have parents come in for conferences, they'll always make a comment like, geez, you know, this math is amazing. I didn't realize that kids were doing math this sophisticated at such a young age. Or I didn't realize that they were writing the way that they are at such young ages. Um, but with our ask and with students working with more and more complex materials, we've also seen kind of um, different challenges with students in regard to what their needs are, right? Some students thrive in digital environments. Some students need support in digital environments. Um, some students kind of take to text and produce text and language in different ways, and some students need support in those ways. So when we think about individualized student learning, it's really looking at kind of the whole child and, and students not only um, that, that may have uh, learning differences, but also really trying to think thoughtfully about challenging our most advanced learners, right? And so this is kind of looking at the range of students that we have and kind of the inclusive practices and tiered strategies and our ability to differentiate to, to meet their needs. So this is, this is particularly um, an important part of our strategy um, that I think you'll see highlighted in this budget and you'll also see highlighted through um, several of the additions that we're looking, we're seeking to make within this budget. And so in, in regard to the um, budget development timeline, this is just, um, this is not all of the dates, the list is kind of exhaustive, but this is kind of a December to April snapshot of um, what we've done. Um, to kind of prepare for and present this budget tonight. And so we start in November, um, looking at past budgets, looking at where we think we are, where we think our priorities could be, um, and that's just, those are just kind of working meetings. Um, principals and directors in, in December this year, on the 17th and on the 19th, principals and directors at all schools at all levels um, were required to come and present their school budgets. As part of this process, we look at the total enrollment for their schools, we look at student needs for their schools, we look at different programs that are in different schools, and we really ask them to be thoughtful about how they are prioritizing, okay? Um, it's not just a, you know, um, it's interesting, it's, it's, it's a meeting, it's an open meeting, and several school committee members have attended um, and they have commented that they have appreciated that, you know, administrators in their presentations of budget needs have kind of been thoughtful around um, reconstituting positions or thinking thoughtfully about how they can use and be innovative to kind of meet the needs of different kids instead of just adding on to the budget. So there's a kind of a responsibility and accountability piece that goes along with that. But principals and directors presented on the 17th and the 19th of, of December. Um, January uh, was a busy month. We did uh, budget staff forums. We met at, with teachers at every school uh, for what we call budget coffees. So 
in the morning, the assistant superintendent, Karen Morrow, and I uh, went to every school, um, sat and talked with teachers, and teachers shared with us um, what they felt like they needed, um, what they felt like they've appreciated that they've been able to get in Wakefield that they've heard other districts don't have. Um, so I think the conversations were balanced, but they were pretty clear and candid about what they thought was most important to them. So um, from there, we developed working sessions with the admin team to kind of go back over the feedback that we got from teachers, again, to, to cut, reallocate, prioritize, <coughs> And, and know that, you know, we don't have unlimited resources. Uh, we do have to be thoughtful about how we budget, but we really need to prioritize. Um, and then we met and presented this information to FinCom, um, and it was also shared at the, in our State of the Schools address. So, which moved us into February. Um, so, yesterday in the morning, we met with Finance and Facilities Subcommittee, along with our FinCom liaisons. Uh, which we were very fortunate to have at our meeting, and, and we presented um, this information and got some feedback from them as well. And so after tonight, our next budget hearing will be on March 12th, which will be um, kind of a, a time when we get to hear from people. Um, and, and on the 25th, we'll present to town council, and on the 26th, the school committee will vote. And so just kind of moving on, and kind of taking a look at some of the type of, of data that we collect. And so after our meetings at each school, um, what we do, what we've done, is we've kind of prioritized or listed the kind of the items that teachers and have reported that they, this is, these are areas. So the column on the left are areas that were highlighted in the survey uh, where we asked, you know, what is most important to you? Right? And so we've heard that all of these things are important, but what is most important? And so, um, so parents, teachers, paraeducators, administrators, all could participate in this survey. We had 321 responses, which is up a little bit from last year. I think last year it was probably around 280 or 290. So we're up probably 30 responses, which is good. Um, but this is the data that was created. It's a little tough to see, so I, I reformatted um, the graph on the next slide, and you can see a little bit more clearly here. I put I kind of rank ordered things so that you could in fact see what the budget priorities that were listed um, from stakeholders, and so and and, and those top priorities. Um, one of the first priorities on our survey was the technology and engineering curriculum um, and technology and engineering opportunities for students. And so the other, the next kind of top priority was the need for adjustment counselors. Um, you know, our counseling support group um, and our teachers, our, our counselors that are working in spaces at each level have really been stretched in the last couple of years. And this has been a challenge for us, it's been a challenge for them. Um, but this also ties into our third strategy about individualizing the needs of students. And so um, the next priority is um, the need for uh, moderate special needs teachers and really thinking about uh, special education. And the next priority after that is our reading specialists. Um, we've heard that, you know, um, what's common in the top four is that they all correlate directly to student contact time, student service directly um, from an adult to a student. And so the other, the other part that I, I felt like I needed to put on here that wasn't part of the survey um, was student contact time. Because, you know, this, this idea about needing more time um, and having more time within the day um, is something that has been discussed at the teacher level for a number of years now. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that as one of our, our top priorities as well. So um, that's the feedback and the data that we got from, those are kind of the, the top five that we got from our uh, feedback survey. Again, we had 300 plus uh, respondents and we appreciate their, their feedback. And so the other thing that's important to note is that other 
other things that were highlighted um, on the survey, we are looking at and thinking about different ways to address those needs that are um, not additional asks in the budget, but trying to meet those needs within the context of the budget. We're looking at trying to continuing to reallocate even after this presentation to try to, um, to meet some of those opportunities and needs as well. So the other part of our data collection um, happened through our student services subcommittee. So we have uh, three members of the school committee and myself that, are, that make up the student services subcommittee. And, you know, that group uh, came together this year, um, which was, it actually, um, you know, this group had a, a big charge to really look at kind of student needs across a, a wide spectrum. And one of the things that I'm pleased that we were able to do is to say what we'd really like to know as a starting point, and this is just a starting point for this subcommittee. But as a starting point, what we'd really like to know is students um, with, learning, with learning needs, um, parents who have children on an IP on a 504 who are transitioning from grades 4 to 5 or 8 to 9 or have transitioned from 4 to 5 or 8 to 9. So that's present and past, right? To, to kind of survey them, to reach out to them directly and get feedback from them using a survey tool um, to say, you know, what are the few priorities as your children are, are transitioning, what is most critical? And kind of the four areas that they really highlighted are kind of the, the significant need for organiza organizational skill support and executive functional coaching. And so that's something that we need to look at and look into with special education. Uh, they also talked about the need for math support because math is such a high stakes course, um, not only in the sequence K through 12, but also to be admitted to college. Uh, there's a particular focus on math, math achievement, and growth in math. And so, and the other two areas are counseling and reading, right? And so, I, as I was reading this and kind of um, reading the, the results and the data from the survey from the Student Services Subcommittee, I was particularly pleased that this also aligns with and substantiates the things that were highlighted by stakeholders in our other survey. So I think that that's just an important piece to note. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we talk about is to just make space for our priorities. You know, if everything's a priority, then nothing's a priority. You know, you have to kind of own this. We need to kind of step into this kind of discomfort and say, you know, we can't do everything. But what are, where are we going to start? What are we going to prioritize? And so, um, you know, principals and district administrators were required to prioritize and make decisions about the highest need for their schools. Based on those conversations, we ended up um, cutting 1.5 full-time equivalent positions from, um, from the budget and then replacing those with some other or different priorities. And I'll get into that in a minute. But we've also made cuts in regard to in school supplies, utilities, as well as special education costs. And so, and, and what I think Michael Piffling has been particularly help, a help with and, and really superb in this area is really helping us, you know, utilize grants and think innovatively about how we're spending our dollars that come in with grants and also how we're using our circuit breaker to create an offset in this budget. And so, um, so the priorities, so this is kind of a, a big slide. So the priorities for us is to continue to focus on individualized student learning, the third strat strategy item, and really focus on the social, emotional learning and behavioral health by adding three um, FTE equivalents um, of adjustment counseling support um, at, at all levels, right? And so, or I should say at the elementary level, and at the high school level. We're looking at um, adding a 0.5 behaviorist, um, and we're also looking at adding a 0.5 reading specialist, which is, um, so when we're adding portions, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5,
0.5 is a half of a position. But in some instances, we already have an existing 0.5. So that 0.5 that's existing within the budget, by, at, by adding this, it can make that position a full-time position, um, which is one of the things that we heard loud and clear. You know, one of the teachers said to us in our, in our coffee survey, or our, our kind of, our budget coffees is, you know, um, at the Walton School, one of the teachers said, you know, please don't give us a fraction of anything. You know, a fraction of someone coming, you know, for an hour a day, it just, it's, it, it doesn't cut it for us. And so one of the things that the first bullet and the priorities that we've made there um, allows for uh, more support, more continuity there. So the second bullet on this slide, um, we're really looking to kind of support and, and value the arts as part of this budget um, and, and art as part of the academic core. And so because of that, we're going to add, um, we're recommending that we add a 0.4 FTE for art at the high school. And, and the third bullet, we're looking to support um, special education needs of students at the middle level by adding a 1.0 uh, moderate special needs teacher. And so um, we're also looking at the possibility of reconstituting a position to provide more special education support at the middle level um, because there's particularly um, some, some kind of difficult situations in regard to how we're providing support in a rotating schedule. But I'll have more information on that as we move forward. And so in, in our fourth bullet, we're also looking to add, you know, I shared this in our state of the schools, you know, we've added in the last three, four years, we've added 3,000 machines to our district, and we have three people in our technology department. Um, and, you know, three people for 3,000 machines, just do the math. And so um, school districts our size um, have a technology department of, of more than three. And so we have, for some time, this has been cut every year that I've been here. Um, and so this time, it's, it's not, we're not cutting it. We're saying that it, it is a priority and that we need it. We need a 1.0 full-time technician, um, and we also need to look at technology and our digital tools as we move forward. And, and activity fees um, will also continue to be supported um, to maintain the levels that we've established and we've cut them down to in our FY19 budget. So pleased about that as well. So the three major areas of the budget, you know, I, I think sometimes people see a big number for what it costs to run our schools, and they think, you know, well, you know, does that all go to salaries? And the answer is absolutely not. Um, you know, I think we wish it did, but we know, you know, it does not. And so the first, the three major areas of our budget are, the first is personnel. Eighty percent of our budget is made up of personnel costs. And so I just want to be clear in regard to when we say personnel, people think, oh, that's just teachers. It's not just teachers, right? We have seven collective bargaining units, 569 teachers that serve, teach, and support 3,533 students and families, right? And uh, there's a lot of moving parts there. So 80% of our, of our budget costs go to personnel. The next part goes to, and it, they're not equal parts, obviously, right? And so the next part go to operational costs. And the third part um, are, are our special education costs and our out-of-district tuitions. And so special education is um, kind of a difficult budget, um, it's a difficult thing to budget for because it's, it's rather unpredictable. You know, as a, as a district, as a public school district, we are responsible for providing support, a free and appropriate education for all of our students, and we need to meet their needs. If we have someone that has emerging needs that we can't support in the district, we are responsible for placing that student in an out-of-district placement in a, in a space that can meet their needs, right? Now, there's a team process that, that kind of facilitates that. It's not done by, by one group or one, not parents alone or not teachers alone, but there's a team that does that. But um, when we have students go out of district, you know, we were asked a question at our finance and facility subcommittee, you know, how much does it cost 
to educate a student out of district? Well, I mean, the answer to that is anywhere between, you know, forty to fifty thousand dollars to three hundred thousand dollars, depending on their needs, right? And so, um, we really need to be attentive to that and thinking about how to support our students. And we we get asked this question all the time, and I feel like I can't address it or answer it enough in the affirmative. We always get the question, um, so do you ever think about trying to build programs in district first? And the answer is yes, always. That's the first place we start. We want to think about educating students in the community in district. It's a first priority for us. Um, and the only time that students are going out is when we can't meet their needs in district. Um, but that is a particular area of commitment um, on our part and responsibility on our part. So um, just a note about special education. Um, the program development to support all learners continues to be an area of focus for us. Um, again, I think that this just highlights some of the things that I just shared around what our priorities and what are kind of things that we value. You know, based on the completion of programming, this year, um, based on the completion of programming and students returning to district, we are anticipating a reduction in our out-of-district placements for FY20. And you'll see that more when I get to our budget slide. Um, but I, just, I also want to be clear that we are proposing an expansion of programs, options, um, at the middle level and at other levels as well, but at the middle level to start, um, which include increased opportunities for language-based services and social communication support uh, because we have students that need help in those areas. Okay? Um, and the, the fourth kind of bullet here, the district has expanded social-emotional learning opportunities district-wide in line with our, our social-emotional learning strategy and the feedback from stakeholders from surveys represents that. And so the need for us to have more support and help in the counseling spaces I think is, is represented in our budget. So um, what we are proposing um, for a personnel increase, uh, we're proposing a $1.8 million, you can round it off to $1.9 million increase of 4.67% over, over FY19. Um, this would be an increase to stipends of $57,000 at 0.14 percent. The new removed positions and retirements will allow us um, $41,000 and so that's 0.1 percent. So the personnel total the in this budget is 4.92 percent at $1.9 million. That's what we are proposing. So in regard to the, the second part, operational costs, so we scrutinize operational costs probably, we go over this and over this and over this and think about, you know, how we can kind of reduce the budget. And so, you know, if personnel makes up 80% of the budget, operational costs are making up 0.48% of the budget. Um, and these are the priorities that we've both increased and decreased. You'll see if um, amounts are in parentheses, they are negative numbers. So those areas have either been reduced to zero or um, have been reduced by the amount indicated in parentheses. But operational cost this year is 0.48%. Uh, the third part, special education. And so um, I, I did share the complexity of special education and the volatility of special education. And on my earlier slide, I did say that we, in FY20, um, due to students that um, have, <coughs> have completed their academic programming at different out-of-district placements, um, and our ability to keep students in district has allowed us to cut special education out-of-district costs by 1.14%. So that's, that's a big cut for us, which is a plus. Um, but we also, an offset to that is with added personnel in FY19 to keep, to provide service and to keep students in district, which goes back to the point that I spoke to a moment ago, which is 
do we ever think about building or providing support in district? And that's what that one, the $198,000 is. So that's an increase of 0.5% with a decrease of 1.14% with a decrease in special education costs of negative 0.64%. So when you look at the negative 64% and you kind of add that to our operational, um, our prior two slides, to our, um, am I getting ahead? So, yeah, when we look at our negative 0.64, and we look at um, we, we look at our operational costs and our personnel costs, um, that brings us to kind of this number here. So we were at 4.92 for personnel, 0.48 for operational. Special education was decreased by 0.64%, which, again, I, I feel like is a testament to the good work that Lynn O'Neill has done um, and her team has done. I think in special education, I think that they've worked particularly hard. Um, and we're also, we've also been uh, fortunate in that some students have completed their academic programming. So um, that's where we are. And so the net total that we are proposing tonight is to increase the budget by $1.9 million. Um, and which kind of decreases with the savings in special education to 4.75%. And so the total uh, FY20 recommended budget um, for this year, the total school budget, would be $41,931,048. And zero cents, as Michael likes to tell me. And so, um, so that's what we're proposing. I also um, thought it would be prudent to just include the governor's preliminary budget forecasting around um, Chapter 70. So it looks like in their reporting it's going to go up by $200,000. Um, you know, we'll see how that goes. But that's what we are proposing. Um, again, our goal is to create great space for kids and to help them be, you know, ages four through 18, have a great experience, and develop the skills they need to, to go on and do great things. You know, we want to inspire a love of learning um, for students and for adults. Um, and I think we have an opportunity to do that, and an obligation to do that. And, so, and this is just a picture from day one at Dole Bear Elementary. So it's kind of a it's big, it's a big shot there. And so that is the recommended budget. I don't know. Um, if after this evening, if, if people have questions, you're welcome to send me a note at that email address. But that's it. Very good. So, um, uh, so, so tonight, uh, th well, thank you, Doug, and certainly thank you, Mike, and the entire team. Kara is here as well with us tonight. Uh, so, th certainly thank the entire team. Uh, it has been a, um, as he demonstrated earlier. Uh, an awful lot of work that, that begins earlier and earlier each year yeah. to get us uh, at, to this point. I think I um, also uh, support and thank yous to uh, <coughs> the uh, finance and facilities as subcommittee members for the, um, obviously the work, the numerous hours that you put into meetings. Um, thanks to the feedback from, uh, from Town Hall, the Finance Committee, and Steve Mayo and, and others that have helped um, sort of shape some of your thinking and your recommendations. Um, so, members of the committee, t tonight is uh, not the time, as we know, for questioning and, and conversation. It's the superintendent's presentation. Um, and we are to take this presentation to the community at large. Uh, members of the community should uh, be aware that certainly our, our budget books in hard format copy are available in the superintendent's office. Feel free to uh, come by if anyone would like one, and a member of the community would like one, please, please do so. Um, the electronic version will be on the website, I'm assuming. When might that be up? So tomorrow morning, the electronic version of the FY20 budget and the presentation from Mr. Lyons tonight will be up on our website. Okay. Probably by 9 a.m. Depends on what time we get done tonight. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's fair. So certainly also members of the committee, please, if you'd like the electronic version, do not hesitate to go to the, front, the home page of the Lakeview Public Schools website to 
Um, now is the opportunity, whereas not only as the seven members of the school committee, but the community at large has the opportunity to really dig in to the type of um, recommendations that the administration is making. Um, as Doug mentioned, and we'll be also reminded um, in point number 11 on the agenda that our next meeting, Tuesday, March 12, um, uh, will be um, the public hearing. Um, and that, at that time, as I mentioned, the members of the community um, and, any, and any stakeholder uh, will, be, will be welcome and encouraged to speak to the community about their thoughts, um, good, bad, or indifferent with regard to um, the priorities of the school district and the priorities that we should be, we should be, uh, I'll be thinking about. So, to, um, anyways, uh, so uh, moving on, uh, other agenda items. Thank you, Doug, for that. We will um, please stay in touch, members of the community. I invite, on behalf of everyone, reach out to members of the community, reach out to the superintendent. Uh, certainly, we want nothing more than continued community conversations around what our priorities for advancing uh, our, our, our teaching and learning should be. And this is the this is the blueprint for what the um, superintendent and the school committee believe are our priorities for next school year. So we want to hear from, from all. Uh, thank you for that. Okay, Mr. Lyons, um, 8C. So b before I move on to see if, of I, course. if I can just, I'd like to thank Greg for your work on Financing Facilities Subcommittee and for the Student Services Subcommittee, for, to, to Chris and to Amy, thank you very much. I feel like um, those conversations have been particularly helpful at helping um, us really have a conduit to parents to think about how our work on that committee can really be um, shown in, in this, in our budget. And so, and to be honest, I also need to especially thank Michael Piffling because, um, you know, the, the budget book is really a kind of an artifact of his work. Um, and I think it's a document that we're particularly proud of. I've had some new superintendents ask me if they could, um, quote, borrow it. Um, because they feel like it's a great tool to use um, to be transparent with the community, but also to highlight and prioritize and align with the instructional strategy and the strategy of the district around what's most important. Um, and so I, I need to thank you for that, Mike. I appreciate it. So moving on to 8C, facilities updates. Um, I'll start with you know C2 and 3. We've submitted statements of interest. Um, to the Massachusetts School Building Authority to get support um, to repair and hopefully replace um, the Greenwood roof or the Walton roof. It won't be both. It'll be one or the other. And so they ask us to prioritize, and we've, we've done that. Um, but it won't be support for both. We hope that it will be support for one. Um, but us being selected for that accelerated repair grant um, is based on, same as the core program, it's based on the number of applicants they have um, and the needs of other schools in comparison to our need. Um, and so, and one of the things that I find myself talking about virtually every week or num any number of days every week is the high school. And so um, we are going through our last, our FY, our last year of statement of interest. Um, and we're going kind of line by line, and we are making edits, um, and we're updating information, um, and we have not yet heard back from MEASC in regard to our accreditation, but when we hear back, that will be part of our uh, MSBA submission for the high school, not for the accelerated repair program, but for to get funds to either renovate or rebuild our high school, so which is been a, a big part of, of what we've been working on um, over break and you know, over the last number of weeks. So that's it for facilities. April. April 15th. Um, I think it might be, it might fall, let me check the date, because I think it falls on a, I think the 15th might fall. Monday, that's what you said. Yeah, so it's the 12th. I think it's eight, uh, April the 12th. So February 15th was accelerated repair, April the 12th, and we should be done our SOI at least two weeks ahead of that deadline. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That's it. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, so just on that on that topic following that timeline and 
Um, we are going to be, it is going to be on our, um, on our next agenda on the 12th, um, a conversation around some, um, some action uh, that we'll be thinking of taking within the community and engaging the community as a whole with regard to the high school project. Because also on the 26th, in meeting that, the schedule, uh, we will need to vote on, uh, no, no later than March 26th, we will need to vote to approve the submission of those SOIs. So on the 12th, we'll have a, a conversation, uh, which is our next meeting around high school project, and 26th we'll be voting to approve uh, those SOIs. Very good. Um, uh, number, uh, item, uh, budget item, excuse me, uh, agenda item nine. Uh, the only thing on tonight for budget is a couple of gifts we've been generous enough to, uh, grateful enough to receive. We have a motion. Mr. Scowney. Uh, the school committee accept the gratitude donation of $1,000 from the Wakefield Cooperative Bank for the Parent University Program. This is the second $1,000 gift to the Parent University from the Cooperative Bank for this year. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Passes unanimously. What is the date of Parent University? Two. It's March uh, 60 or 23rd? 23rd. March 23rd. Okay, hmm? thanks. Sorry, March. Yeah. Great. Okay, uh, moving on. Subcommittee reports. Um, uh, financing facilities. I know we've heard a lot about finance tonight, but you're always welcome to. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, not much to add. Uh, just uh, that you know we appreciate again all the work that um, the administration has done uh, in concert with the faculty and the staff to um, get us all the information we need. And, and as uh, Doug said, we had a good meeting yesterday in which uh, Doug laid out in broad terms um, uh, what we heard tonight and had the opportunity to. Uh, have a little feedback also from our finance committee liaisons and um, so we'll meet again um, in March and um, and uh, have uh, one more conversation with the finance committee um, in hopes that uh, when we bring them a final budget that's been approved by the school committee that they'll um, take that to town meeting with a favorable recommendation. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Any questions for finance? All right, very good. Um, item B, uh, labor relations. Uh, we continue to uh, to meet. We're we're we've, we're meeting. We've got a very hefty schedule now um, set up for uh, uh, negotiations with uh, with all bargaining groups. Um, we've begun uh, with the teachers, and we've got other dates set up um, with other groups for a fairly aggressive um, March and April. So we're scheduled for meetings. Uh, through the end of April at this uh, at this point, so con to be continued, of course. But uh, but those late, those negotiations are are, are, um, are beginning in earnest. Um, policy and communications, Mr. Kelly. Um, nothing new to report. Okay, student services. Um, we know that our student services chair is still on the mend. We wish her nothing but the best, of course, in her in her recovery, but uh, would either uh, Chris or Amy like to? We, we decided to uh, just kind of let it sit a little bit. Uh, Doug was trying to get this budget finished, and uh, but if, if there were more uh, inquiries from the uh, from the survey you wanted to talk about, we were ready to meet. Otherwise, we were waiting for Ann to uh, come back. Yep. Okay, great. Okay, item 11, future dates and agenda items. Um, as I mentioned earlier, next, our next meeting, which is not next Tuesday, I apologize, so our next meeting, Tuesday, March 12th, will be um, a regular scheduled school committee meeting plus the FY20 public budget hearing. The meeting will begin at 7 p.m. Uh, please note that's a, that's a half hour earlier than, than usual. The purpose for that is to be able to conduct the public hearing. Um, at a, so we're not, uh, if, we're, if the public hearing can go as long as the community wants, but we want to make sure there's enough time that it's not dragging into the into late nights. So we're going to add a half hour at the beginning of the meeting to hopefully uh, uh, accommodate a, a, uh, a good interest uh, among community members. Um, and also just as I mentioned in, in conjunction with Doug's uh, uh, report that, um, and to say it out loud, that the, the school committee will vote, will, will deliberate uh, and take action 
up to and including a vote on the FY20 uh, budget on Tuesday, March 26th, a month from tonight. And that will be a regularly scheduled time at 7.30. Okay. Are there any other um, future agenda items for discussion? Anyone would like to put something on the agenda? Okay. Item number 12, school committee comments uh, going around the table. Uh, can we start with Amy? Um, nothing really, just... I hope the boys are doing well right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, when is the time of the clock? That's right. Okay. Uh, Greg? No, nothing for me, thanks. Chris? Um, there's two pieces of information I would like. Uh, it, it, I don't know how hard they would be to get. Um, when we're looking at the, um, on, on the budget book, if you look at any of the lines in, in the percent, that, 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 I'm assuming this percent is of the total budget, not of that line. Uh, what page you refer to? 37. Is that uh, one page? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that is uh, the percentage increases the percent, I'm sorry, that is the, that percentage represents the increase in the budget. The total budget. Total budget. Yes. Would I be able to know what the percentage change of the, that individual line was? Sure, it's something I can put together. Yeah. Just trying to think, yeah, I mean, yeah. and then, um, it's not one line, it's a group of lines, but yes, uh, I'm right. certain that, that one category, however you want to say it. Um, and then, on, throughout the book, we have uh, individuals, uh, centers of, of like with, uh, with history, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, but I don't have a total budget of that information. Yeah, I, I, I'd like a summary, uh, what, you know, I compile all those individual centers into one page that says, you know, professional salaries in total have changed this much over time. So in addition, in addition to page 59, which breaks it up by DESI cost center, uh, just by the, by the fourth decibel, that's the decimal, 1,000 level, 2,000 level, 3,000 level. Okay. So it doesn't break it up by salaries, but it would be all instructional is 2,000, all administrative is 1,000, uh, all student services is 3,000. All required reporting in that form. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I certainly, I think what's, what makes this actually easier to do is once it's uploaded into Munis, mm -hmm. I can run reports and slice and dice. Uh, it doesn't mean that I can't do it in Excel, because uh, once it's in Munis, I'm actually going to take it into Excel anyways. But, um, and I'm not asking you to spend hours doing something. It may not take hours, but, but yeah. if, it, if it was a couple of clicks of your mouse, it would be helpful. I can probably provide that. Okay. Thank you. So, a couple of clicks. Could I ask for clarity for my own sake? So, you're looking for a summary just final the, budget for 17, 18, 17, 18. I, I'm, I'm like, we've got a page with Doyle, we've got a page yeah. with Dalbert. I just like to compile them to one page. I think what Chris is looking for is if you look at our monthly reports, yeah. it says professional salaries. Instructional aid salaries, custodial salaries, and it's not broken up by location, it's for the entire district. So I think I can probably um, work something with that. So I think Maybe actually, by providing the final budget document of each year from, from those reports. Yeah, the, um, the, the newest codes, the object and org, organ object codes are in the budget book, they're just hidden columns. So if I can hide them, I can sort and slice and dice by that and, and give Chris or the entire committee, the, the snapshot, like it looks like in the monthly reports. Okay. The first page is, right, it's, it's tw otherwise, it's like 20 pages instead of a, a, a summary. summary. Yeah. yeah. I can, I can certainly provide that, so. so yeah, if you could provide that to the whole committee, I mean, I think that's an excellent well, question. Yeah. And, uh, Thank you. Can you, that's good. Okay. Uh, Colleen, any, any comments? No comments. Okay. Uh, Doug or, or Mike, any, any comments? Thank you. Okay. I'm um, I'm good as well. We have a motion to adjourn. Just count it. We adjourn its meeting of February 26, 2019. So a second by her. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? Pass unanimously. Good night. Thank you all. <laughs>